Good morning, world. I'm with my friend Jim Usley, and he's got a, a wonderful testimony to encourage you this morning because the Lord is still doing awesome healing miracles each and every day. Because, and he told us that we should be doing the same thing. This is what he wants. It's uh, Mark 16. He told us to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Cast out demons in the almighty name of Jesus. Tell us what happened. You were suffering with some condition for heart. Yes, I was having severe back pain. I went to the doctor around the first part of March and uh, he says, he checked my heart, did me a little physical, and he said, I'm more concerned about your heart than I am your back. I said, what? I said, doc, I don't have a heart problem. He said, well. So in the office, they did an EKG, and he says, well, you got something wrong with your heart, and uh, I need to schedule you for an echo. So a couple weeks later, I went for the echo, and um, I didn't do very well on the treadmill. Uh, after about five minutes, my heart rate was too high, so they stopped it, and so Dr. Zimmerman, the heart doctor, says you need to come for a nuclear MRI. We'll put the dye in your veins and see exactly where your blockage is. So that was scheduled for the 21st of March. Well, my friend Casper called me on the 19th, Sunday night, and he says, hey, I'm loaning my car to my daughter and the headlights out, can you put a ball band? So they came by and Casper says, I'm sorry you've been having health issues. He says, may Haley and I pray for you. Haley was his daughter. So they laid their hands on my heart and prayed that Jesus Christ would heal me from the top of my head to the bottom of my toe. And during this time, I felt a warmth going through my body and I was actually sweating by the time they finished praying and I'm walking, after they left, I'm walking back in the house thinking, my back's not hurting no more. You know, what's going on here? So I get up Monday morning, I have all this energy, um, running around doing stuff. So my wife says, don't overdo it because tomorrow you got the testing. So the uh, 21st, I went over to um, Wellstar to have the MRI test. And... Um, so they shot me up with this wonderful stuff that shows the how your arteries are. And about 30 minutes later, they put me in the MRI machine, started taking pictures of my heart. Then he asked me to go get on the treadmill. About 18 minutes later, I'm burning this treadmill up. And the nurse says, look, you've got to get your heartbeat up to 150. And that's what I'm trying. Turn this thing up, whatever you need to do. So she sped the machine up even more and it took about two or three more minutes. My heartbeat got up to 155, I think it was. So um, she says, okay, we're gonna take some more pictures. So she left, went in, talked to the heart doctor. They were gone, she was gone about five or six minutes, come back. They had me, uh, he injected me with the dye again while I was running on the treadmill. So, um, I had to drink some more water and after about 30 minutes he had me get back on the MRI machine, took some more pictures and uh, about 11 o'clock or so I was out of there. He says, I'll call you with the results. The next day I get a phone call from uh, the doc and he says, I can't explain this. Your arteries are clear. You have no blockage. He said, I've gone over and over these two tests that we gave you, the EKG, the echo, they definitely showed that you had a blockage. So I says, well, I know what happened. The great physician in the sky has healed me. My back has not hurt since last Sunday night. I have more energy and I know what to do with. And I'm giving God all the glory. And he wants to heal everyone. If you'll just come to him and let him heal your body, he can do it. That's an amazing testimony. If I recall correctly, I saw you before you got the phone call on Tuesday. Yes. And uh, I put my hand on your chest and I prayed again. And I, for some reason, declared that because it was an act of the Holy Spirit, that there was nothing wrong with your heart. And so an hour later, you called me with the news. There was nothing wrong with your heart. Nothing wrong with my heart. While we're here, tell us about... Um, some years ago, I was playing 
uh, concert and your wife Heather called me. Uh, we, I was in the back room with some pastors about to go out and play a concert. We were all praying and, and I forgot to turn my phone off and it rang and Heather was on the line and I couldn't understand what she was saying because she was crying. And I finally discerned that your horse, big boy, was um, in a bad situation. I said, I'm, I'm in Atlanta, so I'll, I'll be there and you know, I'll probably get there about one. And I came round. And uh, you want to tell us the story from there? Sure. I have a horse. Um, his name is Delight. I've nicknamed him Big Boy because he's about 16'3. I've had him 20 plus years. Uh, definitely my favorite horse. Uh, he had got in some new grass and had colic. And um, I'd had a couple of horses in the prior week colic. And uh, the vet was unable to do anything for them. They had eight acorns and they were young horses. So both of them, the vet came out, gave them uh, medicine to help them and they never got up, they died. So uh, big boy colic, I did everything I knew to do. I gave him mineral oil. I put him in the washroom and washed him. I put him on the trailer, rode him around. And a little while later, uh, uh, Casper and my friend Rocky Belcher came over and helped me with him because he was a huge horse. And uh, we did everything we could to survive him uh, medically. And uh, so uh, Casper said, let's just lay hands on him and ask God to heal him. He says, God will heal animals just as well as he will humans because that's the way our God is. So this, by this time, it was about 3 o'clock in the morning. So uh, Casper uh, laid hands on him. Rocky laid hands on him. I laid hands on him. And the same thing. Um, he asked God to heal him um, and professed that Jesus Christ of Nazareth can do this. So it was like four o'clock in the morning. I says, well, Lord, he's your horse. If you want to take him, you take him. I have no problem, but we were tired. We had to go to bed. I get up, I wake up about 7.30 that morning. I had to run out to the barn, check on him. I could not believe it. He was standing up. He was hungry. He was eating uh, hay that had fell on the ground because I had not gave him any more food. Uh, from that point on, he's been healthy as a horse, should be, and uh, he's just done great. As far as my animals go, God has performed many miracles there. That's an awesome testimony. Tell us one more before we let everyone go this morning. So you had another horse that the vet, I had another horse that um, veterinarian wanted to put down. Yes, I had a really wonderful Tennessee Walker mare that was due to have foals. And she uh, had a fold early that morning. I went out to the barn about seven o'clock. There was, uh, she was lying down. There was blood everywhere. The uh, fold was on the ground. Uh, didn't look like it was doing well. So I knew that from the looks of things that she had had a really bad delivery. So I called uh, the vet. They came right over within about 10 minutes and says, Checked the mare, checked her blood pressure and heartbeat and says, this mare is dying, she's suffering. I need to give her a shot, put her out of her misery. Uh, my wife and I were leaving the next day to go on a wonderful cruise that we had paid for. And I knew that um, I was gonna have to take care of this fold, uh, hand feed it if it lived. It had not nursed the mare, so it had to have the costume from the mare in order to survive. And um, so um, uh, my wife came home at that time and uh, she laid, I said, look, let's pray for the mare. We laid hands on the mare and we asked that Jesus Christ would heal her. Um, and I knew my wife was gonna kill me if I couldn't go on this trip after we'd spent all this money. So I, uh, within 15, 20 minutes, the mare gets up off the ground, uh, goes over to the fold, and she is um, licking the fold, getting the fold up off the ground. 
the mare stopped bleeding. Um, I called the vet. Uh, the vet couldn't believe it. She came back out about 30 minutes later, mm -hmm. checked the mare. Her heartbeat was perfect. Her blood pressure was great. So um, we went on a trip the next day. The mare and the foal did great. Uh, approximately two weeks later, someone wanted to buy a horse from me, and this same vet had come out to check over a different horse. And he um, checked the horse over for the lady that was purchasing the horse. And um, the vet says, look, I was out here a couple weeks ago, and Mr. Usley had a horse that was dying from uh, having a baby horse, and, and I couldn't believe it. There was some kind of miracle for him says, I've already told my husband that if anything happens to me and I'm deathly ill, to bring me out here and lay me down in Mr. Usley's stall, him and his wife, it needs to pray over me. The Lord is no respecter of person, so what he will do for a gentleman like this and his horses, he'll do for you. In fact, you told me that the uh, cardiologist said, when the head cardiologist was looking at your heart, he thought he was looking at the heart of a man that was 25 years old and you're actually 66 at this point. That's correct. So be encouraged today and we'll see you all another time. God bless everyone.